Hey there, Tim and Eric Tuma back at you. Are you looking for a decent meter to do some projects around your home or at work? Maybe some DIY projects that you've been working on? I think I found the meter for you. Uh, Tessman did send this to me, uh, so I will mark it at Paper Motion, but they're not telling me what to say or anything like that. TCM 300D from Tessman. Now this is a this is a true RMS 6,000 count meter. Cat 3, 600 volts uh, with inrush feature. It also does uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature. Volts up to 600 volts. Amps uh, does have the amp clamp as well. And then it does have the auto feature where the auto feature has, it's in the green right here. There's amps, volts, ohms, and continuity in the auto feature and then the ones in yellow are actually the ones you have to use the auto function button to click over to them like uh, checking diodes or millivolts hertz uh, capacitance the, your temperature and your non-contact live uh, features as well so now this meter does uh, at the time of this video, this meter is running about $49.99. Uh, and it, I did see somewhere I had a 15% coupon on Amazon. So uh, I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description. And hopefully, um, hopefully you can uh, uh, obtain that little discount. I really think this meter is a... Uh, a decent meter for the price. Like I said, I really, really like this meter. It's very easy to use, and especially with the auto feature. And it does actually come with a light as well. So you can turn on the light. So I'm going to run through and test some capacitors and stuff so you can get a better idea about this meter. So I'm going to show you how this switches from. You should be able to, to read that. It switches from octo to we're testing. Now this is a Dewalt battery, 20 volt battery. And you can see it's reading, takes literally a couple seconds to on the auto mode and it goes to 19.3. Again, Pushing my leads on there, 19.3. I'll go from the start so you can kind of see it's on auto. One, two, so two seconds, and it shows the thing. Now, if I go, if I want to check capacitance, like on this one here, uh, this one here should be. This should be the common and this is the herm now on this one I have to if I want to check a capacitance I have to go over here and put it on capacitance so I'll get it from the common to the herm this should be 35 oh that's the five sorry the common common and fan Oh, here it is. Okay. I had the common and fan. Common. Common and herm. See, it says it takes a little longer for the capacitance. So it's supposed to be 5 microfarads. It's 5.2. And then if I go to this terminal, it should be 35, 35.77. So it gives you a thing. So let me take my lead off there. I'll go one, two, three, four, five, just a little over five seconds to check the capacitance. Let's do that again. I'll do these two. This should be 35. One, two, three, three seconds. 
So to read the 35. Again, let me try th these two and see. One, two, three, four, five. So five seconds. I'm, I'm not sure why it goes five seconds on one, the other one. That's the only drawback to a, an auto meter. You have to, it takes a little bit longer. And I'll give you an example. Let's see if I can set these up right next to each other. This is the field piece meter. And if I put it on microfarad, which is kind of, so you should be able to see that right there. Turn that so you can see it. Looking in the viewfinder, it looks like I can see it. So I'll check this. Now I'll go in between these one, two, not even two seconds. And it shows 5.29. Now I'll do the other one, it should say 35. One, two, two seconds. So this is a this is a field piece, and the only difference is this doesn't have the auto mode. The field piece does not have the auto mode, so it's a lot quicker on the on the readings. One, two, basically barely two seconds on that. Let's let's try the voltage. Now I do have to, since I don't have the um, volts DC, since I don't have the auto on this one, I have to change it. So I'll go from here and again. It should be. 19 something see if I can get the blades in there these are a little these are a little fatter on here so I'm trying to see if I can get them inside here I can't get them inside there these are not as sharp as the other ones. See if I can do it this way. Put it in the end. Yeah, I can't get these. It's just a little bit fatter right here and it's harder getting these deals in here. Let me try something. Should not hurt. Just so you can see it. Um, I'm going to try should be interchangeable okay so now I should be able to fit these in there and kind of get an idea yeah 19.3 so the uh, probes on, on this one is just a little fatter he's actually a little sharper right here on the edge so they're they're easier to get in there so with the with the probes off the testament, I can actually check it with the, so 19.3. But you see how instantaneous that was compared to waiting on it for a couple seconds. Like I said, I think that's the only drawback to this type of meter is, uh, and they're fairly accurate. Um, I don't think there's any, any real difference in the accuracy uh, with the testament, I think it's a pretty decent meter uh, for most uh, general public. And when you're marking on this one, when you plug it in, the black goes to common. So you put those in there like that. So, actually, I think I put the wrong ones. Um, these actually go with it. So, you put the input uh, which is your red and your black is your common uh, like I said the only thing that you have with the auto auto function on these is your the time you have to wait just a couple of seconds before you get your reading and let me see if you, I can show you how um, in the sunlight see how yeah, I'm in the shade right now and you can see the the reading is it's a nice reading and you can still read it but it's they tend to kind of get um 
a little lighter the more the more uh, you're in the sun. Let me let me flip this around. Now I'm in the direct sunlight. You can see it's a you can still see it. I've got it facing up towards the sun. You can still see it. But once I walk into the shade, it's a little easier to see now. You can see the difference. Kind of walk up here. You can still read it. That's another thing that I noticed about these screens, whereas you do it with the, um, let me show you with the field piece. And you kind of see what I mean. The field piece, you can pretty much read it in the direct sunlight because of the, that has basically a black and white screen. So same thing like that. The, these are made to actually be out in the sun all the time. So, but you're looking at, I think this meter normally ran, this, this meter normally ran three to $400. And uh, luckily I got it second hand and I didn't pay that for it. For what I've seen so far, this is uh, a pretty decent meter. Now I will say, I wish the leads were a little longer. They're, they're about three feet or less. Um, actually, let me, I have a tape measure out here. I can kind of see how long they are. I think they're about three feet. They look to be more like 32 inches uh, on the leads. Um, they are pretty decent leads and you can take off these little tips like on most of them to get to your sharp edge here. Um, but it normally sticks out through there. I usually keep them on and, and one thing I do like about this meter here is I'll turn it off and I'll show you. Um, when I'm at work, I've been carrying this one in my, my tool pouch. Um, I have a... This is a holstery nickel pouch is what they're calling it because it has five uh, pockets. And uh, I've been putting this so the leads don't get bent or anything. They stick out on top. I've been putting this uh, kind of upside down and it fits in here real nice. Uh, so if you're looking for a meter to fit in your, fit inside your little tool pouch, uh, I use this for my kind of everyday carry stuff. I have a, uh, Milwaukee Fastback in here. I have a, my boss calls these a uh, tweaker, um, little bitty screwdriver. This, this has four different um, settings on it. So, and then you can, um, I usually just put it back in there and then uh, make it smaller like that. So I just clip it on there. And uh, so I carry that every day. I uh, always carry a Sharpie because I'm always marking stuff. Extra flashlight. I got another flashlight in the... Let me take this off right here. This is just clipping on there. And then I have another flashlight right here. And then in the back I have a pair of uh, like Knipix. They're usually the cob cobalt version. I carry these just in case I tend to lose things sometimes. So, And then I have a pair of uh, small wire wire strippers that I keep in there so but the thing I like about this meter is it actually fits in and I'll put links to all this stuff on there uh, holstery is, does some got some great products I uh, even have a uh, even have a little small ratchet right here and a head strap for the flashlight and I just kind of put it around my head I keep an old toothbrush in there when I'm cleaning off contacts and stuff like that so just throw down in there but this is what I normally carry at work uh, again this is the holstery nickel pouch but the meter fits in there really well and um, I do a lot of troubleshooting inside the building as well the facility I work at is 86,000 square feet so I'm pretty much on my feet all day and if you're getting good value on my channel, I appreciate if you go down there, hit the like and subscribe button, hit the bell icon, you get notified when I post a new video or go live. And this is Tim Ayer, two of my back at you. I'll be back.